it happened again. Fort Collins ranks as one of the best places on another list to move or to live or to retire or for kids school or for safety or crime or one of the many things the city of Fort Collins has ranked or performed well on these lists. City of Fort Collins website, Fort Collins Gov has a great list of all of our prior accomplishments and awards, honors and awards. And recently on one of my YouTube videos, an individual suggested that your industry is to blame for the majority of this and the majority of people moving to Fort Collins. And while yes, I am in real estate, my team and I, we do a lot of business here in Northern Colorado, whether that's Fort Collins, Loveland, Wellington, all over the place. I don't think necessarily that it was my videos, 1500, well, 1600 subscribers strong. Thank you very much for everybody who's watching. Did too much to sway, you know, uh, tens of thousands of, not hundreds of thousands of dollars decisions for families to move all across the country to this amazing place. I think you people that live here in Northern Colorado shouted out loud enough for all of us about what an amazing place it is to live in Fort Collins. But what this video is, we are going to do a response video of sorts to the World According to Briggs recently released video, Top 10 Places to Move in 2024. So we'll list all 10, some of the criteria that they looked at and where Fort Collins ranked on that list. If you haven't watched the video, go watch it. It's, uh, it's great information. The World According to Briggs does a great job of diving into a lot of data. He and his team do a great job. But actually, I got this video brought up to me by one of my clients who just moved here from Houston said, hey, just kind of reasserting some of our decisions. So I looked at it, watched it, thought it'd be great to do a response video. So not delaying any further, let's jump into today's video of the number one place to move in 2024 according to the world's according to briggs let's go so if you haven't watched many of uh, the world according to briggs videos he does a great job of really talking about different small cities most affordable cities biggest cities best cities to move to towns within a state best states to move to worst states best schools he really does a ton of information so you know definitely go check out his videos i think he does a great job but this video, we're going to specifically look at his recent video of top places to move in 2024. So let's jump into the top 10. Here we go. Number 10, Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte is the largest city in North Carolina and it's home to Bank of America. The city is also a major transportation hub and it's home to Charlotte Douglas International Airport, which is the ninth busiest airport in the United States. Charlotte has a strong economy and it's been bringing people in. They got a really nice downtown and their median home price isn't terrible. It's about $450,000, but Charlotte's a great place to look for a job if that's what you're doing. Number nine, San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the United States and it is home to the Alamo. The city has a strong economy and a vibrant downtown area. It's really, really nice place to hang out. San Antonio is known as Military City USA. They have a strong community for retired military and for active duty military. If you're looking to buy a house here, the median home price in San Antonio is about $350,000. Number eight. Huntsville, Alabama. And it's crazy because during the video while you're watching, he really just kind of shits on the rest of Alabama saying the only place that is nice in Alabama. Got a few friends from Alabama. I'm not necessarily sure that they would agree, but they did move here from Alabama. So that is saying something. Huntsville, Alabama is nothing like the rest of Alabama. Huntsville is home to the United States Space and Rocket Center, and the city has a strong economy. It's a pretty cool downtown. This is a thriving tech hub with a low cost of living. They also have amazing parks here and a lot of outdoor recreation. The median home price in Huntsville is about $250,000. Their number one employer is the United States Space and Rocket Center. Number seven, our first Colorado listing, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Colorado Springs sits about an hour south of downtown Denver, Colorado. It is home to the United States Air Force Academy. It's a beautiful city with a decent climate and there's plenty of things to do outdoors. A lot of people really like Colorado Springs. Even though home prices are climbing, it's still affordable. The median home price in Colorado Springs is about $450,000. The number one employer here is the United States Air Force Academy. Number six, Fayetteville, Arkansas. And again, he kind of on Arkansas and says this is one of the only nice places to live 
in Arkansas, which is Fayetteville. Fayetteville is a city in northwest Arkansas, and it's known for being home to the University of Arkansas. It's totally different from the rest of Arkansas. Great schools, safe community. I mean, compared to the rest of Arkansas. This area, even though it's growing, it's getting popular, and it's really doing some right things, they have a pretty low cost living, and their home prices are really low. But if you want to buy a home in Fayetteville, Arkansas, you're looking at about 250,000 is the median. Realistically, that's pretty close to what you could get a house for. Number five, Austin, Texas. Now recently, uh, there's been a different, you know, real estate market there that prices are reducing pretty quickly, pretty rapidly. Good deals are to be had there, but still ultimately the Austin, Texas is a great place to live for lots of different reasons based off of the list and data that he accumulated. Austin is the capital of Texas and it's home to the University of Texas at Austin. Austin has a strong economy and a very diverse population. They've got a great climate, plenty of outdoor activities, and a vibrant art and culture scene. Definitely friendly and welcoming residents too in Austin. The median home price in Austin is about $550,000. The number one employer in Austin is the University of Texas at Austin. Number four, Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina. And again, he kind of goes in a little bit about how North Carolina is not so awesome, but not nearly as bad as he hits on Arkansas or Alabama. Raleigh and Durham are cities in North Carolina, and they're really part of this triangle. It's Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. Raleigh and Durham are two of the fastest growing cities in the country. These cities have a real strong focus on education and research. They have some of the best healthcare in the country in this part of North Carolina. The median home price is about 350,000. The number one employer here is Duke University and North Carolina State University, about the same. Number three, Sarasota, Florida. Now, that again came in uh, one of our only Florida properties on this top 10 list for 2024. And these are big cities, not our little towns that are the best of. He will be doing that as well, but these are big cities that uh, he talked about. Sarasota is not just for retirees anymore. It's a beautiful city with a warm climate, white sand beaches, and a relaxed lifestyle. The city is also home to several art museums, theaters, and cultural attractions. They also got some pretty good universities in the area. For a coastal town, this is not a very expensive place to live. They say the median home price here is 500000 Number two, and I think it, it felt like that uh, the world, according to Briggs, had an affinity towards this, but Madison, Wisconsin. Madison is one of those cities I always recommend to people. Low crime, decent cost of living, home prices are reasonable. They say the median home price here is $400,000, and the number one employer for Madison, Wisconsin is the University of Wisconsin, Madison. It definitely seemed that he really enjoyed this area, directs a lot of people who ask him questions about where they should move to Madison, Wisconsin. But that was number two. Number one is Fort Collins, Colorado. Fort Collins is a city in Northern Colorado that is home to Colorado State University. The city has a strong economy and another one that has a vibrant downtown area. It's really nice. It's about an hour from downtown Denver about how they want to put like a bullet train that goes from Fort Collins all the way down to Pueblo. I think that would be a really nice addition to the whole front range thing. The median home price in Fort Collins, they say is about $475,000. Their number one employer is Colorado State University. So we come in at the number one place to move to in 2024. Now, not to say that there's gonna be some people who move out or who move in and what our actual net inflows or outflows are, We've always had a pretty decent net inflow, about a percent and a half growth population on average over the last many, many years. But number one, Fort Collins, Colorado. Now let's dive into some of the data that they looked at and where my thoughts are uh, really what he said versus what I see. So a lot of the, the information that they provided was main price homes. The World According to Briggs, I, I, I do, I, I subscribe to their channel. I do watch a lot of their videos, but I don't, I'm not a huge follower of him, but it does look like a lot of his business comes from referrals to individuals looking to move to different areas. And then he gets a referral fee, I think, from agents that are referred to through a specific, I think it's home advisor or something along those lines. So that being said, I, he does have, you know, some real estate focus behind it. So the median priced home that he suggested for Fort Collins was $475,000. And I don't know really, I mean, I, I try to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it was it's pretty, pretty decently off about $75,000. At the end of 2022, a rolling 12 month average looking at both single family detached and attached dwellings, so condos, townhomes, the median rolling 12 month average price was $550,000. I don't think he would be looking at specifically condos and townhomes. 
And if you looked at single family detached houses, that number is going to be much higher. So looking at those two, the closest figure I could get to them was about $75,000 off. So median price for a condo and town, a condo townhome and single family detached about 550 by the end of 2022. Now, he also talked about this bullet train that's going to potentially go from Fort Collins to Pueblo. I doubt that. I mean, I think at some point they were talking about a hyperloop and maybe that comes to fruition, but as slow as you know, government works and intergovernmental relationships and things of that nature. I mean, we are a snail moving towards getting a max transit, but ma rapid transit system maybe to Colorado Springs. So having a bullet train from here to Pueblo, maybe in 50, 75 years, <laughs> that's possibility then. I don't see that anytime soon. He also talked about kind of uh, getting an older home in Fort Collins. You could get one for 375 to 425 and a move-in ready home for $500,000. Again, it just depends on if you're looking at condos or townhomes, but ultimately I think he's a little low on those numbers. You're probably going to be at a, a bit higher, which makes me question some of his other medium priced houses for the other areas. Not sure exactly where he gets his data, but it's not like it's far off. It's just something to take a look at if you're looking at any of those other nine areas. Now, other things that he looked at is employers, economy, Enemies, crime. It really seemed, seemed like he had an affinity towards uh, areas with universities in them. Tech scene, climate, schools, and healthcare. So I'm going to jump through all of how Fort Collins kind of stacks up so that if you're considering moving to the number one place in uh, 2024 to move to, you have some kind of more information. And if you want any more questions, you know, feel free to reach out. We do work with a lot of people who relocate from across the country and world. We are licensed real estate agents in the state of Colorado. So give us a call, text, or email if you're considering moving or you're relocating here to Northern Colorado. So our top employers, Colorado State University, different bigger employers and economies here in town are gonna be government, healthcare, education, advanced manufacturing, and a small but growing tech scene. And also you can't go without saying our craft beer. We are the Napa Valley of craft beers in the United States with the uh, OG New Belgium here, but we have plenty of others. And that is a pretty decent economy for us here in Northern Colorado. Now crime, it's definitely it could be something that you'd want to look into specific areas, but generally speaking, lower crime than the national average, much lower on the violent crime, probably a little bit higher. Uh, the reason why we rank a little bit higher is probably property crime, break-ins, burglars, things of that nature. But generally speaking, Fort Collins ranks lower than the national average on crime. Vicinity to airports, DIA, the number three busiest airport in the world as of the end of 2022, just ahead of Chicago O'Hare and just under 70 million passengers serviced in 2022. Now, it is a phenomenal hub. It can pretty much get you anywhere in the world. Not everywhere, but definitely a lot of places. And it's just about an hour drive away from Fort Collins, especially with E-470 that came into play. It just cuts out a lot of your drive time. Now, once I-25 continues to grow and expand, Hopefully that hour maybe gets down to like 45 minutes to 50 minutes with fewer and less traffic depending on the time of day that you're driving down to the airport. Things to do both outdoor and just generally speaking. We are a platinum rated bike community. So we have got uh, paved trails all across Fort Collins, a specified bike lanes. We've got hiking, skiing within two to three hours at Dora, Vail, Copper, Breckenridge, Steamboat, you know, world-class skiing within a, you know, just a very short drive. Hiking, camping up the Red Feather. Additionally, Pooter, the Pooter River is a major recreational area for it. My team, we're going to go do some uh, whitewater rafting here at the end of, we will probably by the time this gets released at the beginning beginning end of June, end up beginning of July. That being said, there's plenty of other things to do. Uh, Discovery Museum, uh, but not a lot. Uh, with the Lincoln Center, no professional sports team. We've talked about that, but lots of outdoors activities. Lots of people move here to Fort Collins for the lifestyle design. And like I said earlier, he did seem to have an affinity towards university schools. Colorado State University is a phenomenal school, just over 30,000 enrolled, about seven, over 7,000 people employed. Number one tier research uh, university, over $400 million invested in 2022 towards research. It's a great, great backbone of economy for us here in Fort Collins. You know, late 1800s as far as a start and continues to grow. Colorado Aggies, now Colorado State Rams. Go Rams. 
Uh, he also looked at the vibrancy of downtowns, Old Town Fort Collins, historic Old Town. Disneyland had some inspiration, Harper Goff. You know, there's lots of different, really attractive things about Old Town Fort Collins. We just put up the flowers for spring, summer. We've had so much rain that I'm sure they're going to look beautiful all throughout summer. Our alleyways, our projects, the buildings themselves. Downtown Fort Collins is definitely a tourist trap, but worth going and exploring and definitely something to go hang out with during festivals and you know just on a weekend basis go grab lunch it is an area now that you probably could spend at least a half day if not a full day going and grabbing breakfast coffee shopping lunch shopping some more maybe some things to do over at the exchange listen to a concert on thursday night watch a movie lots of different things that you could do that you could possibly spend an entire day there if we figured out the parking on the two hour versus the garage parking our tech scene, eh, small, but growing. Uh, definitely nothing like Denver or Boulder or anything like that, but definitely some opportunities for tech companies that are starting up, Turbo Tenant, Bill Go, Laborjack. Hopefully they grow roots here and really explode. We'd love to see something like that, but I know there's a lot of different things. We're probably not gonna ever attract necessarily a Twitter, Google, Facebook, one of the fangs, Netflix type deal for a headquarters here in Fort Collins, rather than they're gonna be down in Boulder, possibly Denver. But that being said, I think we do have an opportunity for a company like Woodward, who decided to put their world headquarters here and definitely excited to have a publicly traded company that has so many good employ employment opportunities here. Avago, Broadcom, lots of different bigger employers, HP, Intel here in Fort Collins that have stayed here and really people have enjoyed living here. But we've got to really probably cultivate that uh, Colorado State University student who has created a tech company who decides to stay here and bring employees here. We helped in a, a, an individual move here from Chicago who has a tech startup. They can work from wherever, but he had an employee down in Denver and Fort Collins was really his jam. They moved from Chicago here. So I think over time, we're gonna see some smaller tech companies that are very successful, maybe that fly under the radar that's not so mainstream, but for now, it's kind of a ho-hum tech scene here in Fort Collins. Our climate, we're kind of, a, you know, an arid, dry desert, high desert type deal. Uh, we have four fully complete seasons, distinct seasons, and but each one can, ha you know, bring with it different seasons and different years. Very cold winter, tons of rain this year versus, you know, other years where we can be absolutely dry all through May. And you got to start your sprinklers early in May because otherwise your just yard's going to dry out. But definitely an evolving climate here as far as sometimes it's rainy, sometimes it's very windy, sometimes it's snowy, sometimes it's just perfect for, for many, many days and months. Lots of great sunshine here in Fort Collins, which makes it very attractive, but you do make sure you need to wear your sunscreen because we are higher up. And so the higher you're up, the higher, closer you are to the sun. And I could absolutely, we went to Las Vegas, hang out outside, I had my shirt off. You know, I did have a ball cap on shit, you know, protect that bald head. And it was a, for a decent amount of time, did not get any sunburn. And then here I was outside at the pool for like, I think like 15 minutes. And it was quickly, I was like, oh, I, I better put a shirt on because I'm going to get burned. So definitely something to take into consideration. Higher altitude here in Fort Collins versus where you may be coming from or relocating from. So something to take into consideration. And finally, our schools and healthcare. Now, there's so many different ranking systems for schools. And, you know, really, it's going to be getting down to whether you want to go public, private, Montessori, public charter. Lots of different options here in northern Colorado. Our public school is great. I went through it. Uh, Cruz, Bolts, Fort Collins High School. Can't say enough about uh, good things about it, but definitely something that you would want to look into. I think there are lesser performing schools within the Pooter School District than others, but overall, great. Fort Collins Pooter School District does a great job. And finally, healthcare, Banner Health, UC Health, Kaiser Permanente. I don't know. Or, yeah, Kaiser. I don't know if it's Kaiser Permanente anyways, but Kaiser. Uh, UC Health is where we go. Uh, Banner's great. Lots of different bigger facilities. Medical Center of the Rockies is right down the road. Pooter Valley Hospital is where I had our three kids where I myself was born. Um, healthcare is great here for Collins and very close by. You can absolutely have world-class surgeons in and around your area, whether that's knee replacements, joint replacements at the Orthopedic Center of the Rockies. Great people over there know, know a lot of those surgeons and not always just press and surgery. So whether, whatever it might be that you're looking for, Associates in Family Medicine is where I go for my personal primary doctor. I've had no issues. Haven't really had to go down to Denver for anything. The furthest that I would have to travel for anything for family or myself would be MCR. Uh, it's a world-class medical facility just to the south of Fort Collins. So there you have it, everybody. The kind of breakdown now, he didn't necessarily, the world according to Briggs, didn't necessarily go into detail on how he ranked those to get 
the best place to move in 2024. But throughout the rest of the, throughout his entire video, he kind of mentioned and hit on these different things. So I thought it'd be worthwhile discussing each component of how I think Fort Collins reacts. Now, depending on where you're considering moving on that list, if anywhere or somewhere else, I would definitely recommend to reach out to a professional, ask the finer specific details as high level. I'm sure there's some great stats that they stack up well or better than other areas. Maybe the data is off a touch, but ultimately the information is probably consistent throughout. So the rankings is probably very fair. That being said, if you're looking at getting finer details about like what the actual cost of a median home single family detached is or anything like that, reach out, ask questions. We'd be happy to help. Now, until next time, everybody, thank you for watching. This was the number one place to live is Fort Collins in 2024. Have a good day.